My name's Adam Waldman and I am the leader and saxophonist and composer for a British jazz group called Kairos Fortet. We have a new album, Everything We Hold, coming out on Name Jazz. Initially this record was actually going to be called Plus One, but after all the music was recorded, it was kind of apparent that um, there's a much better name for this album than these words. And this record, we're trying to incorporate some elements that are really important to me. There's some folk elements, there's elements from, from classical music. Well, I went to school with Rupert. Um, stayed in touch and lived together for years as students in London while he was at drama school and I was at music school. Um, I don't think we ever ima imagined that we were going to write music together. So I'm Rupert. On his second album, Statement of Intent, he had, he had this track and he called me and said, uh, would you write lyrics? To, to which I said no, because I've never done it before. And he said, I really think you can do it. Will you just have a go? This is Adam's favourite little phrase. The collaboration seemed to work so well that I knew on my next record I needed to explore that. We've got four vocal songs on this album, two of which uh, Rupert wrote the lyrics first, and I set music to that. And there's two other ones where we went the other way around. His belief that I could do it, I honestly believe that's why I could do it. I don't think I could do it. Didn't I knew I couldn't do it until he believed I could, and then I knew I could. Of course, Adam could really believe I could play the saxophone, and it wouldn't work. But um, he could believe I could start to learn, and I might. Okay. Just one more full one. Should we just? Do you want to just go over the uh, yeah, the right. outro? The first song we recorded for this album was Song for the Open Road. All the songs on the album are about different relationships. And I think to me this one is about one's relationship with, with their environment. And we felt that we, need, we needed a voice that was sort of lived in and, and wise. And um, it was important in terms of all the songs to find singers um, that would be operating in a new context, in context that people might not expect them to be in. Omar's name came up really quickly. We used to listen to Omar's music all the time when we lived together, and we're both massive fans. And it sort of coincided with the time that we, we won a Mobile Award for Best Jazz Act, and Omar was on our table, and we were all super excited about that, and we got speaking that evening. So it was kind of, I took it as an act of fate. So I took it walking asking. The other song on the album where the lyrics were written first is Narrowbow Man, uh, which features Amelia Martinson, who we've worked with for a long time, incredible uh, female vocalist from Sweden, and um, a great Irish singer called Mark O'Reilly. Narrowbow Man actually was a, was a uh, poem, I, I, I suppose, uh, and I gave it to him for his 30th birthday. It's a song, again, another song about a relationship, but it's about friendship. So she spoke to Rupert at length about his intentions behind the words, and she really got inside it, I think. And you see her putting her heart and soul into every note, and I still, you know, I haven't worked with her for years and years, I'm still very moved every time I get to hear her sing. The other new collaboration on this album is with uh, Mark O'Reilly. The first time I met him, actually, was when he flew in from Ireland to, to Real World Studios and we kind of threw him straight into it. Rupert actually first introduced me to Mark's music and we were in my kitchen and, and Rupert played me this incredible voice and I was like, who's, who's that? I knew at that point I wanted to work with him. I know you, you know me. Els Bells was, was for my niece and I, you know, I got the first time I saw these words, I was, I was choked up. But this one, we hadn't really discussed what I wanted to say. I told him it was for my niece as a lullaby, and that was pretty much all I told him. The other song where uh, the music came first was "Home to You," which was really a dedication to my girlfriend. I guess it's a love song. So. Um, for Rupert to put lyrics to it, he's basically just written a love song to my girlfriend. We're trying to focus on things that are personal, that hopefully have a universal essence that people can 
relate to. Take off my call. To me, that song is about the person that we can be ourselves with and the person we can sort of take off the mask and completely um, be at home with, really. The hardest thing is always to describe your own music verbally. You put attention to detail into making it and I guess the confines of genre can be slightly frustrating, but to me this is, this is still jazz music as I understand it. With all these pieces of music, improvisation is, is at its core and expression in the moment. I always think about melodies as like little gifts almost that people can take away and and put in their pocket and, and carry them around with them. And I think that's a really integral part of what we do. A lot of the material on the record was, was written in some enforced time off I had to have because of an injury to my elbow. I mean, which was, which was pretty frustrating. Um, but it did allow me some time to, to focus on composing and really think about what I wanted to convey with this new batch of music. Um, and there's a piece on the record called Reunion, which is, uh, was written in anticipation of coming back together with this band that I feel so lucky to work with. Should we go from here then? time I make music with them I, I learn something. So there's a track dedicated to each of them on the album. Um, the first one that that comes up is uh, a piece I wrote for our bass player Jasper Hoiby. Um, Jasper has this incredible big warm sound and I wrote this tune from a little tongue-in-cheek called J-Ho from the Block. The track that opens the record as well as being part of the 99 suite and opening up that sequence of music. It's also a dedication to our drummer, John Scott. His approach is really about giving what's most appropriate for the music, not necessarily drawing attention to himself. Also a little tongue in cheek is uh, a piece I wrote for Ivo called Finding Nemo. Uh, our pianist Ivo Neem gives everything. Every time he touches the piano, he's He's giving as much as he can, um, and he's sometimes hard to keep up with, so hence Finding Nemo. Jules Buckley um, came in to produce a few of the tracks. I've known him for quite a few years. We met as teenagers. I was doing a summer music school, I think, and Jules used to play trumpet. In my first couple of years in London, I lived with Jules, actually. He was studying trumpet at the Guildhall. So we're all friends. There's actually a small period of time where uh, myself, Jules and Rupert all live together. As sort of musicians, especially as improvising musicians, your kind of willingness and your excitement to play can kind of supersede everything. Um, and I think it was great to have Jules there to remind us of, of what was right for the song and what was right for the material. We recorded half of the record at Real World um, probably more than half actually, and we also recorded it at Premises. I think sometimes there's some incredible studios in London, but you clock off at a certain point and you have to go home and sort of try and pick up the energy again the next day. And I sort of wanted to be in a space where we could carry on until we were done. And it was exhausting, but um, kind of pushing ourselves to our limits in a way, I think helped us find some things we haven't before. So this is the first time I've tried to write a suite of music and it kind of bookends the album. They're all instrumental pieces called The 99 and parts one, two, three and four. A lot of this music was written at a friend of mine's house who's heavily involved in the Occupy movement. It was a real inspiration being around him and the people that he works with. And The 99 suite is a kind of dedication to those people who give themselves on our behalf for for the kind of greater good. So he talked to me a lot about wanting to find a through thread. And in the end, 
He, he said that the through thread is collaboration. I actually would dispute that. From what I know of for whom he wrote each song, I think it's, it's more to do with gratitude for the people in his life. The mystery of music and the way it makes us feel, one of the most important things to me is that it brings you completely into the moment and in that moment we're all the same.